All right, so here's a new toy. The just released in August of 2016 Star Trek Bluetooth communicator made by the Wand Company, which makes a number of high-end uh, fan toys like this. They also make some Harry Potter stuff, Doctor Who, Star Trek. For all I know, they make Star Wars as well. Uh, but the one I wanted was the communicator. It's supposedly modeled very closely after one of the original high-quality props, what they call the hero prop, uh, which I think would be the one that you'd see in close-up as opposed to in distant shots. And they would have fewer of these than they would the other props. Um, it's a fully working Bluetooth handset. It's got various play features, uh, recorded voices of various Star Trek characters, contactless magnetic uh, charging stand and desktop display stand, and uh, lots of other features. So I'm going to open it up here. Inside I have a shrink wrapped. Uh, carrying case, I guess. It's a carrying case. Have to open this up. Alright, so here's the uh, fairly solid plastic construction USS Enterprise NCC 1701 standard issue communicator. And uh, on the back they go so far with the conceit to pretend like it really is property of Starfleet, but then it goes on to have uh, Authorized for use as a wireless bi-directional communications device and issued as standard field equipment. And then it goes into the FCC and so on and the, the wand company of England and as everything is these days it's made in China. Well, of course, in the time when Starfleet is operating, they probably aren't even really separate countries, are they? All right. So it has a really deluxe contoured foam set of pockets and recesses. This is your charging base. Well, this is the bottom of the charging base, which I just dropped on the floor. And of course the communicator itself. Very nice feel to it. I'll go into that in a little bit more. Okay, here's the display stand and uh, charging base and it's got a uh, I think it's die cast zinc from the description so it's a nice solid metal base and uh, USS Enterprise standard issue communicator got the Enterprise logo on there and that comes with a short USB cord with a uh, micro USB connector on the end and full size on the other end. So everybody would probably want to know if this is going to flip open like Kirk did it. Yeah, I'm trying to do it with one hand and it's not too easy to hold the camera and coordinate the phone surprisingly. So that flips open and you can also roll it open And it has some sort of, feels like a magnetic capture on there. You've got your little moire pattern thing there. Uh, yellow, red, and blue LED with the crystal supposedly modeled after the original. The little speaker and two buttons. The uh, right hand one is actually a joystick and you can also push them in so I have to read up on it to see how that all works there's also this faux leather um, communicator uh, holster which as far as I know you just put it in to keep it from getting scratched it's, it doesn't have belt loops on it or anything So that's what the holster looks like. It's uh, clearly plastic, but it has sort of a faux leather finish on it. 
and then the inside is lined with some sort of soft felt like uh, uh, fabric so that's not great but it's not bad either and then finally you get your uh, official Star Trek original series communicator manual as it says manufactured on earth by the wand company so the whole thing is phrased as if you're uh, actually in Starfleet and you've just been issued this communicator and it's your instructions on how to use it I haven't read everything on it yet but it looks pretty thorough lots of color good looking diagrams lots of text as much of it as I've read looks like it's well worded um, it even has another conceit on here showing you the range uh, up to 20,000 kilometers to asterisks which says uh, using national and international mobile phone networks so yeah 20,000 kilometers if you go over the cell phone networks or the landlines and uh, since it is Bluetooth it'll communicate with Bluetooth phones and so on smartphones uh, five meters between the communicator and your smartphone or other mobile phone and as they say one million kilometer range to the starship uh, using subspace communications technology single asterisk clarifier not available until 2260 so I'm good for that gag have to charge up the communicator now and see how well it works all right, I've got my charging base plugged into the USB on my computer, and the, it has a uh, multicolor LED that shines down onto the metalized sand, and it cycles uh, in the white color when it's just ready and waiting. And then the communicator should just sort of dock onto there like that, and when that's the case, it goes to red indicating it's charging it made a little sound there when it first hooked up uh, and the red LED on the charger briefly lit up and when this starts cycling in the uh, green or blue range that's supposed to mean it's charged so the device is sort of operating at this point but I'll let it charge up. And it looks like the uh, the base's LED is changing from green to blue which is the indication that it's charged although I've noticed it wants to do this periodically. Not really sure what that's about. It may be uh, detecting that I've done something with my phone which is in my other hand Anyway, I think the battery's charged. The uh, moray pattern operates, but it doesn't operate indefinitely. It seems to have a, uh, a time off. Yeah, there it stops. I think that's part of the design, but I haven't read that far in the manual yet. Alright, I'm going to try to place a call to myself using my landline. Two, three, four, five. Communication terminated. OK, 
Okay, so that worked. The phone itself rang, and then the, uh, the communicator made its noise. I'll do that again. So I just dial it. My phone's going to ring first. And then the communica communicator makes its beeping sound. And then I can place the call uh, normally using the handset here or hang up. Communication terminated. Now, my uh, mobile phone doesn't support voice dialing, so I can't uh, use the communicator to initiate a call. However, I can initiate the call on the smartphone and then use the communicator to actually do all the voice part of the call once the dialing part is done. Um, so at least it's capable of doing that on any phone, and uh, on some phones it can also um, init or place the call by doing voice dialing. All right, so the uh, communicator can make a whole bunch of uh, pre-recorded sounds, and I'm going to demonstrate a few of those. So I flipped it open, and uh, if I just use the right button here and single click it... Voice command. Oops. That's if it's... Uh, I have to terminate that. I did the wrong thing. Ah. Miles, the first one. Books a million on W Grand Avenue <laughs> in Gurney is four miles away. You can say directions, call, details, or next. Yeah. I gotta turn that feature off on my phone. I was fooling around with it and got Google Now or something going. It's annoying as all get out. I haven't got the knack of flipping this open yet. Not sure how to help with that. So annoying as that is, um, let's try doing some of the other things here. I can jog the right button up. Enterprise, Spock here. I can double jog it. Affirmative, Captain. Enterprise out. I can hold it. But that's, if you're uh, um, in the mode that I am here, holding the right button up is just a volume control. And uh, it only works to say, please repeat in Spock's voice, if I'm not currently connected. So that's not something that's op available to me when I'm connected uh, to my uh, smartphone. Um, now, it's a little hard to demonstrate here, but if I hold the left button and hold the uh, right button up, well, I'm not coordinate enough to do that, but it would say, can you give us your present location, Captain, in Spock's voice. So that really requires two hands or somebody more uh, coordinated than I am. Anyway, so I can jog the right button down. Yes, Captain. In Sulu's voice, double jog. Aye, sir. And um, if I were to press the left the button and the right button together, it would be a long message from Starfleet Command. Uh, a left jog. Scotty here, Captain. Or double. I'll do what I can, sir. And if I hold it left. get the classic interference signal and if I were to hold the left button while I was doing that I'd get the emergency signal that's uh, used on many shows and then uh, right jogging McCoy here uh, double jog received and understood and um, holding it at the hailing beep and if I were holding the left button down I'd get a delayed hailing beep so there's a, a number of, you know, canned voices like this that you can access. And if you get, you know, good at them, you can almost hold a virtual conversation with it. Um, 
if you're using the communicator to play music that's stored on your uh, phone or streaming from your phone, then these buttons can also uh, skip to previous tracks, forward or backwards, rewind, and uh, adjust volume of the music being played. So um, there's that now. The creators of this phone also gave you three LEDs. Uh, the left one would be flashing green if I was not connected to a Bluetooth device. Um, alternating left and right pairs, saying it's pairing. The right jewel uh, double flashing blue, meaning it's connected to another Bluetooth device, which it's doing right now. You can see the double blue flash every so often. Um, left jewel alternating green and red, a call is incoming. So let's see if I can demonstrate that again. And there you can see through the grill that the left LED is now alternating between red and green. This shows that there's an incoming call. Communication terminated. And turn my light back on. Uh, so there's some other LEDs. The right jewel pulsing blue, a call is in progress or music is playing. Uh, and if the left jewel just glows red steadily, then you've got a low battery. So not a ton of LED combinations to remember. Pretty simple. And it looks like this is a, a quality device that uh, should be sort of fun to play with and can also be used seriously in uh, daily communications if you're so inclined. I mostly plan to have mine on display. Uh, I just like the way they look and they remind me fondly of uh, my childhood watching the old Star Trek episodes. But every so often when it's appropriate I'll probably take this out and actually use it. Anyway, I thought some of you might be interested in seeing what this device actually looks like if you're contemplating buying one. They're about $150 each and can be ordered from the Star Trek website. Thanks for watching.